Let's explore some cheap chassis or chassis power supplies that I bought as part of a bundle deal from AliExpress. And initially, I was really quite excited about these because it looked as though they had what's called a synchronous rectifier in them. The top just unclips and there was a component in here. And the difference between a standard rectifier and a synchronous rectifier is that whereas you might just have a standard diode, a synchronous rectifier is a MOSFET and it has a bit of extra support circuitry and it means it's like a zero loss diode. It's very, very efficient and it results in very low heat. But it turns out once they arrived, when I'd bought them, um, that it's just a standard dual shot key diode. But more importantly, I also discovered that where there should be a class Y capacitor for electrical separation between the mains input and the low voltage output, they've used a standard capacitor. Okay, it is rated a thousand volts, but it is just a still a metalized film type capacitor. But anyway, let's uh, open up both these power supplies and take a look at the difference. This one claims the big one. It claims to be, well, let's zoom down a bit. The big one claims to be um, rated 100 watts for 12 volt supply, um, DC 12 volts at 8.3 amps. I have to say that with typical supplies that you get from non, shall we say, proven sources, I tend to recommend if you use them at all that you use them at half the current rating that they say because they'll run a lot cooler. They're usually pushing things to the very edge at the stated power levels if they can even get up to halfway. This one, this smaller one, is 12 volts at 5 amps it's rated. Uh, other things worth mentioning, there is an earth terminal in these, but it's not connected to the case. Um, and, uh, well, tell you what, let's take the circuit board out here. Let's grab a suitable screwdriver. There is a, a screwdriver. It might not be a suitable screwdriver, but we'll find out in due course. So I'll pop this screw out and we'll open the little dinky one because I'm going to be removing the transformer and we can take it apart and see out what the electrical separation is like in the windings. But on the back of the metal frame, the aluminium frame, is a piece of plastic as an insulator. Let me pop that out, in fact. There it is. It's clear. That doesn't make it terribly, terribly visible, but there is this piece of plastic as an extra layer of insulation. I'll just pop that back in there. Not that this power supply will necessarily be going back together again. On the back, we have the, well, where is it? Uh, the earth terminal. Yep, it's this terminal here. And it would have been nice if that had been connected to this uh, screw connection point because that would have earthed the case, but it's not. Just so you know. And this is the naughty capacitor here. This is the one that's supposed to be a class Y. And the point of a class Y capacitor is that if it... Uh, fails, it does so in a safe way because it's mains this side, it's low voltage this side, and you don't want to be fingering what you think is a safe 12 volt supply and find that it is actually 12 volts superimposed on 240 volts or 120 volts, whatever your local supply is. But anyway, I'm going to remove these capacitors um, just to make it uh, more visible and we'll take a picture of the circuit board, reverse engineer it, and then uh, take the transformer off as well and uh, unwind that. Something worth mentioning here. The circuitry is very similar on both units, but they've got a smaller capacitor on the lower power one, the primary side, but the same value, 2200 on the secondary side. Also, they've got a huge area here, which is uh, just basically heat dissipation for that dual shot key diode package. Okie dokie. Right, I shall take some pictures, remove some components, and we can explore. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. I shall put this circuit board out the way. And after we've taken a look at the circuitry here, we'll uh, pick apart the transformer and see what the separation between the ends of the secondary winding versus the primary winding are just to see if there's good separation. And it's so bizarre because my initial thoughts are this is a really good design. It's an interesting little switch mode chip because its pinout is just optimised for the layout. Um, I mean, obviously the layout has been designed around that, but the actual pinout is logical to actually simplify that layout. Um, there's no class Y suppression capacitor in the input or any sort of filtering or inrush limiting it. Basically, it's not going to be great for the radio hams. It's going to be a noisy little supply, most likely. And that silly, silly capacitor that they've just used because they, they already used one for the snubber network 
to use that as the class Y suppressed capacitor is just a bit reckless. It's a bit silly, strange, but not to worry. So what do we have? We have the incoming supply. We've got a one ohm uh, fusible resistor. We've got a bridge rectifier and then the smoothing capacitor. We've got the control chip and the MOSFET that switches the primary winding. We've got the current sense resistors. There's a group of three of them in parallel, which is quite a lot. And then a little resistor that leads over to the chip. We've got the gate drive for the MOSFET, a 33 ohm resistor and a 10k pull down resistor across that. Fairly standard. Um, and then the feedback winding. Um, it charges this little capacitor here. One Initially, when you first turn it on, that capacitor is charged by, via these uh, 510 kilo ohm resistors, two of them in series, so just over a megohm. And that's the little delay you get when you turn these power supplies on. It's these resistors charging that capacitor. It's also the bit that when it fails to keep itself in operation, if a, there's a feedback issue from the, sec the secondary side, uh, it will. It's the bit that makes it pulse, pulse, pulse. Um, but as it tries to reset, and it basically charges that capacitor up each time. Uh, there's a couple of sense resistors here that sense the, the voltage, which across the feedback winding. I should actually label that feedback, feedback, primary, and secondary. And this, uh, the feedback winding mirrors what's happening in the secondary. So that's the voltage regulation is done by uh, detecting that from the primary side um, via this potential divider. And when it's up and running, uh, as well as giving that voltage across the potential divider, it also keeps that capacitor topped up via this diode and uh, this 33 ohm resistor just charging that. Um, the snubber network has the usual arrangement. I'll show you that in the schematic. The output has lots of options for the Schottky diodes or just high-speed diodes. They don't need to be Schottky. But um, they've got loads of positions for those, but they've used this package here with two diodes inside. And then we've got a couple of load resistors just to make sure that the uh, unit can basically, it slowly discharges the secondary and it keeps the primary side awake and that helps keep that capacitor charged up by a knock-on effect. And there's a big smoothing capacitor and off site here is a, a 20k resistor and here's the little green LED. Right, okay, let's take a look at the schematic. It's a very straightforward schematic. I shall zoom down in this just a little bit. It is zoomed. So here's the incoming supply. There's the fusible resistor, bridge rectifier, the main smoothing death beam capacitor. And then we've got this is a little power supply capacitor and it trickle charges via these resistors here. And when the voltage is high enough, this chip kicks into action and starts pulsing this MOSFET here. The MOSFET uh, passes current through the primary winding from the positive connection to the zero volt rail via this cluster of three resistors which give a total value of 0.6 ohms. It measures the voltage across those resistors to detect when the coil is reaching its saturated state. It's not fully saturated, but as, it, as the uh, magnetic field builds up, it pu puts less resistance to the flow of current through it, and that's detected across that resistor. There is the 10k pull-down resistor to keep the MOSFET from false triggering, to keep it uh, firmly off when it's not supposed to be on, and then a 30 ohm resistor between the gate drive to the MOSFET itself. Um, and what it does is that uh, it puts that magnetic field into this transformer, this transformer here, and then it turns off and the magnetic field collapses. And when it collapses, that portion of magnetic energy goes through this diode, a little, the Schottky diode, the pair of Schottky diodes, and charges up the capacitor on the secretary side. So it's basically, it's just a continual pulsing of charge it up magnetically and then dump it over to the other side. So it just basically portions the current across in little dollops. Uh, when the MOSFET turns off to protect it, I should have actually shown, hold on, mm -hmm. end channel MOSFET. I have shown the snubber network here because when the MOSFET turns off, before, just a, as protection, before that uh, the secondary side can start conducting, there might be the risk of a very tiny voltage spike uh, when you turn that inductor off. So it diverts via this diode 
a tiny portion of that energy and uh, it charges up this capacitor 2.2 nanofarad, 1 kilovolt, and that is continually trickled, discharged by these two 220k resistors in parallel across that. And if you can imagine that uh, a surging water in a pipe, uh, if you had a bucket to catch that water and then a little hole to let it drizzle out, it just basically it gives a place for that energy to be dissipated um, in those sort of pulses. Um, and that is it. Now, the, there's the 2.2 nanofarad capacitor they've put in instead of a um, class Y style capacitor. And the point of a class Y style capacitor is that you get Y1, 2, 3 and 4. Y1 is the highest voltage, Y2 it would be more suited to this application. But why one? It would be good for them all. But basically speaking, they're designed to fail safe because they are connecting from this side to the low voltage side that people might be touching the LED tape or whatever load is connected to that. Um, and uh, by putting this foil, this basically wound foil capacitor, in, it just in puts the risk that if that capacitor fails... If uh, there's a high voltage transient between the primary to the secondary side and it punches through the insulation of that foul, it could actually provide a current path to that side and run the risk of giving people electric shocks. The class Y capacitors are specifically designed to fail in a safe way. Um, this isn't a class Y capacitor, I don't know if I've mentioned that, but it looks like it, it's the blue, but they're usually a bit thicker because they have a big slab of the ceramic inside just to make sure that even if they crack, uh, you're not going. You're going to maintain a good space between the two sides, um, and that is more or less it. Uh, the shot is pumping up that capacitor, big fat capacitor, pretty impressive. There's the discharge resistors that just provide mean that it has to keep pumping it just because the voltage will fall on that side and it just keeps the circuit active. And there's that really bizarrely high 20k resistor in series with the the green LED. So let's take a look at the transformer now. So I can take the tape off this, but it will probably not separate into its two halves. Will I brighten the image up? Yes. Just a little bit. If this is not going to just pop apart in a convenient way, which I don't think it is, now I'm going to have to start squeezing this and breaking it right. Tell you what, I shall remove the ferric core. One moment, please. I have suitably crunched the ferrite core. So we'll unwind this outer layer. Is this going to reveal the secondary straight away? It's revealing a layer of the uh, primary windings. And right already, already, I don't know if you can see that. Let me let me just uh, refocus and zoom in this for you. I'll get this tape off the fingers. It's stuck to my fingers. But right at the moment, I don't know if you can see that. I shall focus up to here and zoom in. And can you see that the primary side and the secondary side are very close, yet it's just a, a single insulation in these. Mmm, okay. Right, next layer of tape to come off. I probably have to cut these wires to get that off. It's quite common to wind the primary as two layers, uh, an initial inner layer, and then an outer layer, or this might be the feedback wind. And if there is the feedback wind that's wound on the outside, then that's purely to provide really good coupling so it re properly reflects what's happening on the secondary. I'm trying to find the end of the tape. One moment, please. I have found it. Let's unwrap this. So there is the feedback winding. And, uh, to be quite blunt, not overly thrilled with electrical separation here. That, uh, tell you what, I'm going to remove the feedback wind. I'm going to unwind it. That was about eight turns. 
Uh, now I'll remove even more tape. This is, it's hard finding the end of this tape. Also, it's quite hard to undo. Just give me a second. I found it. Hopefully this is in focus. It looks in focus, but this is a very small monitoring screen. So this is... Let me take a closer look at this. That is part of the primary wound over the and they're just mushed right up i don't know if you can see that they're just mushed up against each other so the electrical separation is relying on layers of varnish that's not actually good enough okay well that answers that right i'm zooming down again and let's go back to let's focus down to a nice comfortable level so um, the transformer is a fail as far as I'm concerned. That's disappointing because otherwise, you know, it was looking like you could have just basically swapped this capacitor out for a proper class Y1. It would have been fine, but I don't like this. It, I prefer it when they use what they call the triple insulated wire, which is the thick wire. Well, it's basically it's got multiple layers of insulation. It's not just one super thin lick of lacquer. Um, and I know it is rated to a modest voltage, but it just the the point of failure is that you're literally relying the the bit between you and 120 or 240 volts is a thin, super ultra thin layer of lacquer on the wire. That's not that great. Uh, so the only option here is to change the classification of this power supply from. Uh, SELV, separated extra low voltage to protected extra low voltage, PELV and get an earth wire and use this terminal and loop it round and actually connect the negative. But that's not suitable for all applications. But if you actually uh, connect the negative to mains ground, then it means that when something goes wrong, it provides a fault path for mains voltage getting onto the low voltage side to actually trip breakers and stop you being fried, basically. But there we have it. It's so silly. I mean, they're cheap. Uh, nice case. It's almost worth getting the case for. That is quite a smart case, particularly with the cover clips on. But, you know, they've gone 90% the way there, maybe even 95% the way there, and they've just not finished the job and made this safe. It's just a very third world day, not really caring if people die or not type of thing like that. What a shame, because as I say, otherwise these power supplies would have been quite smart little power supplies. But there we have have it. It's, uh, it's what you expect, unfortunately. This is why I only recommend that for any application where people are going to have direct contact with uh, the low voltage side, like LED lighting, I recommend that you only buy the power supplies from prominent sources in your country. In the UK, that could be uh, rapid Electronics, RS Components, CPC, Farnell. In America, it could be DigiKey, Mauser. But get something like, in my case, I'd, you'd generally choose Meanwell Power Supplies just because that protects you from the liability of some getting a shock off something that you built. But there we have it. Interesting Power Supplies, really nice design, just didn't quite finish the design. <laughs>